Dan Jackson here. Just want to see if I can answer some of your questions on the periodization of the elite level CrossFit athlete uh, that I couldn't quite answer very well typing it out. Uh, bear with me on this during this presentation as you can tell on the whiteboard. Unfortunately I have some glare. Uh, I'm at my gym. Uh, we don't have the most optimal lighting and so and there's no special combination of lights uh, that will allow me to get rid of this glare. I have all the windows and doors blocked off. Um, so I, I do apologize, but I am going to be talking through everything so you don't have to rely on what I'm writing up on the on this whiteboard. Cool? Okay, cool. So let me first talk about it. CrossFit, as you well know, is a very controversial sport, um, and I'm only going to be talking about the elite level. So any of the general population is going to be completely left out of this equation or completely left out of this lecture slash explanation. So hopefully um, before you guys think about asking any questions about that, uh, please just uh, bear with me on the elite level only uh, during this. Cool? All right. So let's start and let's just talk about elite level CrossFit periodization. Uh, I want to first talk about the season itself. Uh, the season, the CrossFit season, if you will, there's three sections. There's the CrossFit Open, Regionals, and the CrossFit Games. The CrossFit Open is the first qualifier for the CrossFit Games, the games being the final, and it starts in February and ends in late March. So the way it works is they announce one workout on a Thursday evening, and all participants have until Monday evening to submit their best score. So it's one workout, they do it once, twice, three, four, how many times they want to do to get the best score, then they submit their results in their video and they have a judge that go, uh, that grades them on how they go, making sure their movement standards are met uh, and making sure that there's no cheating. Cool? Now, it's five weeks long, so that's why it's February to March, starts last week of February, ends last week of March. Okay, uh, that, that first workout counts as the first week. Generally, what happens with this is you get a wide variety of people. Last year, I believe 300,000 people signed up for the CrossFit Open. It's just a sense of community. But that's the first portion of the season. The second portion is regionals. So top 20 in each region throughout the Open worldwide qualifies to move on to regionals. Regionals will have 8 to 11 workouts across a weekend. There's usually a minimum of four workouts per day. Uh, there's individual qualifiers and there's team qualifiers. Then there's also your uh, um, separate category qualifiers, which is kind of skip regionals, being your teens and your masters. And there's a bunch of different age brackets for masters. Uh, <laughs> these competition dates range from April to May. Now, they're only one weekend long, but they start in April and usually in late, mid to late May. Uh, the dates usually change from year to year. Moving on from that, you have the CrossFit Games. The top five in each region worldwide moves on to the CrossFit Games. Generally held in Carson, California. This year they're going to be in, I believe it's Milwaukee or Madison, uh, uh, Wisconsin. So top five worldwide per region move on. There's generally 12 to 15 workouts. Last year I believe they only had 15, 14. Uh, but it's across five days, and there's a minimum of three workouts per day. Uh, sometimes there's upwards of five, <laughs> which is really unfortunate uh, for those participating, but generally the next day is not going to be a killer. It won't be easy, but it's not going to be a killer. Now, that's at the end of July. So essentially the CrossFit season, if you will, starts in February and ends in July. Uh, apologize for the notepad. Uh, these have my notes broken down on uh, what you guys asked me and what I'm going to address. So we think about the season, which isn't going to think about, holy cow, that's a lot to prepare for, for somebody just competing in fitness, right? Because that's my sport, competing in fitness. So we move on. We're going to look at the macro cycles. Okay. And I'll read these out. I'm sorry I can't see them because of the glare very well. But so we're starting in August. Okay, games are over. Elite level, remember, keep in mind. So August, for the most part, probably three, the first three weeks of August, is going to be kind of a transitional or play time. Uh, transition time is essential for an athlete. Uh, if you guys have read Tudor Bumpa's periodization book, which I strongly recommend, uh, not just because it's you know, part of our class is some of the secondary books, but uh, I have lived by that book for years, and I love it. So get that if you don't have it but 
August is kind of like playtime, do what feels fun, general physical preparedness, transition, what have you, eat a bunch of food, get fat. Okay, that's kind of where August is for the elite level. Then we move into September through November. That's going to be a movement specific cycle. So we're looking at strength, power, speed, and technical focus. Generally, uh, they're going to spend a lot more time on the technical focus because the first thing they tend to lose, excuse me, is going to be their strength, speed, and power. That's the hardest thing to build up. And if they're already weak and they qualified for the CrossFit Games now, let me say weak, meaning they're still strong, but weaker compared to the field. If they lacked strength in the area that, or in the demand of the CrossFit Games that year, they're going to focus a lot on the strength, power, and speed portion after technique, technical focus. So that's going to be September through November. Not so much hardcore breathing, lactic endurance, threshold training, but a lot, a lot of techniques, speed, strength, power. Then from November through mid-January, that's when they're going to start getting into a little more endurance focus, some cardiorespiratory endurance, cardiovascular endurance, stamina, so on and so forth. The open prep is what it's called. Movement efficiency at moderate to high intensity and pace focus. This is where that high training demands that are coming to play. One of the things you guys questioned on my uh, post for the periodization was the five times a day uh, training protocol, or the five times a day for three times a week during a macro cycle. This is where that portion is gonna happen. Okay, similar to like, let's take uh, was that? swimming. Let's use swimming for example. Uh, generally, the most difficult portion of training and swimming is going to be during Christmas break. And Christmas break is where you just, at least in my experience in your swimming and, and coaching swimming, you break the body down hardcore. That's where the majority of all that's going to happen uh, during that portion. So you can think of CrossFit kind of when that five times a week is going to happen, or five times a day, three times a week is going to happen, is going to be in that winter range. After the mid-January, or excuse me, the November through mid-January, the mid-January through the open is going to be the continued pace focus, with, but the intensity and demand backs off significantly. Uh, very, 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 very few elite level CrossFit athletes are going to have to do five times a week training anymore after <laughs> that mid-January. Uh, sometimes some of them only do it two, time, two weeks, Others will do it probably four to six weeks, uh, which would be, if you think about working out five times a day uh, for six weeks, that could get pretty mentally uh, draining, but I'm going to explain a lot about how that could not be mentally draining, um, so bear with me.